Do, 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 do. It's time for another tier list. Today I'm going to tackle a game that I know extraordinarily well. Most of my viewers know me from Game Builder's Garage, but I actually have a ridiculous number of hours in Mario Maker 2, and most of my time was spent making levels. So let's make a little tier list. Today we're going to tier just the terrain assets for Mario Maker 2. Just to be clear, we'll also be including some of these extra course parts over here that they aren't technically in the terrain wheels, but they function very similarly to how you'd use terrain. And I'm gonna try to be very restrictive in that. So standard loop and snoop tier list rules. If you see two items in the same tier, the order of the items means nothing. So if this does not mean anything about a brick block versus a bridge relative to each other, they're both just in B tier. Also, when arguing about tier placements, plus or minus one tier isn't really a big deal, all right? Like people can argue plus or minus a tier. The difference between A and C tier, that's very substantial. But plus or minus one tier, if, if you come to me in the arguments arguing about that, like I'm just gonna ignore you. And lastly, I'm gonna be tiering these course parts based on how generally useful they are when building levels. Like how much would you lose from Mario Maker if this course part were deleted? Mario Maker is a game all about building levels on a grid-based system. And in that sort of system, blocks are king. As a result, there's not a whole lot of terrain assets that are considered bad. There's only like a couple of them. Most of them are really good. The main difference is gonna be good versus better. Without further ado, let's go. I'm just gonna get this one right out of the way. Ground tiles. Ground tiles are an easy S plus tier, all right? I pinned ground tiles to my little toolbar on launch day. And over two years later, it's still there and I have never felt like removing it. You just use ground tiles for almost everything in the game, right? Like, it's so simple. It's just terrain that does not break. It resists basically everything and you can't go through it. Although there are some glitches and exceptions, usually ground is extremely reliable. Furthermore, ground tiles naturally connect into other ground tiles and are usually very good in terms of decoration. You have on-ground decoration, in-ground decoration, context-sensitive ground, etc. And overall, both in terms of function and aesthetics, it's just the core of any Mario Maker level. It's so important, you get a huge separate limit for it. Like you can fill a stage like over two thirds full of just ground tiles. And generally a level looks really weird and unusual if it's not made with ground tiles. But yeah, easy S plus tier. Now let's go along the chain in this bizarre order. Brick blocks are pretty good. Like there's a couple of main reasons you'd want to use a brick block. One is to invert high ground advantage in like a traditional style level where you can basically attack enemies from below over and over again. And second is to have a breakable block because brick blocks can be broken by a wide variety of different things, not just bombs, like shells can break brick blocks. This makes them useful when you need terrain that can change easily. Being responsive to P-switches is also a big plus. While you can use brick blocks to spawn in entities, it's generally less clear than if you use something like a question mark block or a note block. So you only really want to use brick blocks for spawning if you want to troll someone. It only really gets B tier because it's not the type of block that you really put in every sort of level. It's just a generally handy block. Bridges. Uh, bridges are kind of like one of the worst aesthetic parts. They're mostly equivalent to semi-solid platforms. The difference is you only get one color and they come with extra restrictions over what sort of tiles you can place on top of them. And these restrictions are not very helpful for usually employing bridges to make a level look good. Clear pipes are really good. Clear pipes are one of the main reasons why you'd want to go into 3D World. So I'm kind of choosing between A and S. For now, let's just go with A tier. Clear pipes are very good when you need to move something from point A to point B in 3D World. And I'm being very vague here because that's really what clear pipes do. You can use them in Kaizo levels to shuttle around items. You can use them in contraptions. You can use them to shuttle Mario around as a mini transition. But yeah, clear pipes are pretty versatile. And depending on what comes up later, I might move it up to S tier just because it's so good that this is basically one of the core driving reasons why you'd want to make a level in 3D world. Cloud blocks. Cloud blocks are pretty versatile. They're like semi-solid platforms where you have a little more resolution, whereas semi-solid platforms have a minimum size of three tiles wide. You can put cloud blocks 
more finely, so they're just like one block at a time. And besides that, they're mostly indestructible. There's like, there are only a couple of ways to destroy cloud blocks, specifically thwomps, skewers, and giant spike balls, to name a few. But the general use case is just when you need a platform that can support something without being solid itself. You'll use them a lot in music levels, and they have much heavier use in 3D world where semi-solid platforms aren't as good. I might move this up to A tier, depending. Donut blocks. They are basically cloud blocks, but less useful. Donut blocks in general, just, it's like a flimsy lift that requires you to wait on it to go down. It's also kind of similar to a cloud block. Donut blocks are pretty handy, but the fact that you need that waiting period and they only really respond to Mario and Thwomps makes it so that they're kind of one of the weaker sorts of blocks in the game. Hard blocks. These guys make scroll stops. They're absolutely amazing. Like the fact that they can make a scroll stop is like the number one reason why you'd want a, a hard block. Controlling screen scroll is just such a huge deal that just that property alone just carries it into S tier. The, the secondary usage is that it's a hard breakable block that does not have extra physics associated with it. So it's not like an ice block that's slippery or a question mark block that you can also bonk against. Overall, hard blocks are extremely generic and you'll see them in a huge variety of levels just because of screen scroll. Ice blocks, uh, I mean, ice blocks come with ice physics, which are pretty niche. Ice blocks are basically like hard blocks that don't contribute to scroll stop and they're slippery. It's just not that common that you want to use a block that takes away control from Mario being able to, you know, maneuver left and right. It happens, but it's definitely not common. Kaizo blocks. So Kaizo blocks are pretty good for de-cheesing levels and for troll levels. For Kaizo levels, they're very clean in that they're like invisible. Like you don't have to worry about that adding any visual clutter to have the Kaizo blocks there. The downside is that if your de-cheesing setup requires Kaizo blocks in order to function, then it also looks like you can cheese the level and it kind of baits the player into trying. That said, it's a very useful and very clean one-way mechanism or a way to just kind of stomp out all the player's hopes of survival. Kaizo blocks can also spawn things, but usually if it's something mission critical, like you're setting yourself up for a disaster. <laughs> you, usually you put something in a Kaizo block to screw over the player. Be it a boo ring, a fish, a muncher, etc. Like that's usually what you put in a Kaizo block. There's usually not much good. Mushroom platforms. Mushroom platforms are a really handy type of semi-solid platform that's just, it's decorative, all right? It's just not as generally useful as a semi-solid platform because you only get like the stock, which is gonna look like a pillar or like a corkscrew, which is very handy, but because it only really has like a couple of colors and the different colors only affect the actual mushroom part, which is kind of not that common in most levels. It's, it's okay. It's not bad, it's just not used everywhere. Note blocks. Uh, if Composer were here, he would probably like kill me over this. So, like, they're great for music levels, and they're also great for like spawning things. So one of the main uses for note blocks is to kind of convert power-ups into entities. So instead of spending an extra Goomba, you can have, let's say, a one-up run over a note block to spawn a Goomba. These entity saving setups are pretty handy, and you can also use note blocks to bounce off of them. That said, they aren't the most common type of block for actual function. Pipes are really good. They're basically like the only way you have of reaching the subworld, and they also function as infinite spawners. There's only a couple of things in the game that can spawn things indefinitely, and the most reliable ones are bill blasters and pipes. Pipes with different colors let you spawn things with different frequencies, and also spawn things usually without any sort of speed unless you put a parachute on them to explicitly give it that speed. You can also use pipes decoratively, but that's not really why I'm putting it in an S tier, mostly because, I mean, you literally need it to access the other half of a level, and the ability to spawn is just like, also just amazing. Question mark blocks. Question mark blocks are really good. You can use these to spawn things all the time. While you have many options for block spawners, question mark blocks are the best for this, because they usually have the implication to tell the player, yo, there is probably something inside this block. You should go hit it and something will come out of it. 
or something will hit this block and then something will come out of it. So in general, it's the best block spawner because it has that extra bit of conveyance. Just that property alone makes it useful in a huge variety of levels, all sorts of genres, etc. and it's just a great block overall. Semi-solid platforms. Semi-solid platforms take an easy S tier for at least 2D World. In 2D World, semi-solid platforms, I mean, they are like three tile wide platforms that can't break, kind of like cloud blocks with extra restrictions, right? Just based on that, you'd imagine them to be below cloud blocks. However, semi-solid platforms have the distinction of being the main way in the game to decorate a background. So they usually come in three different colors and you can use them to make all sorts of different backdrops that depend on the theme and the style, etc. And overall, like this is gonna be one of the major tools for decorating a level. It's not the only tool, you can definitely decorate a level without it, but it is such a useful tool. It is, it is just up there. I really can't give it anything less than S tier. Slopes. Slopes were a game changer, man. Like going from Mario Maker 1 to Mario Maker 2, first aesthetically, just being able to have rounded edges, huge deal. You can make levels that don't have weird, gross, blocky stairs or have rounded edges or just curves, etc. And just, it's so nice. While Nintendo may want you to use slopes to slide down as an attack, that's one of the least useful options for a slope. Usually slopes are really good for when you need like half a block, where when you're on a tile based system and every single tile is like a full square, a slope can give you a block that's not a full block. You only have like half of the block or a third of the block actually there. And as a result, you can set up all sorts of different types of collision with a slope. The only reason it's not S plus tier is that it comes with more restrictions in how you can use it than ground tiles. Coins. They're technically not terrain, but they count to the kind of the block limit, and I, I just feel like they deserve a place here. They are probably between S and A tier. They are just like, you know, S tier, because they basically belong in every sort of level. They are the king of indication. They just have the inherent meaning to the player to do something, to go collect them. Sure, you can turn coins into brick blocks with a P switch, but that is actually pretty rare. In general, I'm not the biggest fan of P-Switches, and a lot of makers aren't either, because they have a very fixed timer associated with them. Unlike an on-off switch that has a, a very fixed trigger of when you want to start and stop it, you don't have that same liberty with P-Switches. So that aspect of the coin isn't really that great. The number one thing for the coin is just the ability to cleanly convey things to the player and also give them positive reinforcement that they're doing something right in your level. With that, let's skip to the P-Block. Because P-Switches are generally bad, they are not that great of a course part, right? Because the whole point of a P-Block is that it's a block that turns solid when a P-Switch is active. And unlike a coin, it's not collected. Whenever you're using a P-Switch, you definitely want to use P-Blocks as like your main go-to block because they're really reusable, they're really robust, they don't break. It's a very robust way of setting up blocks in your level that change with a P-Switch without worrying about all the different things that can break a brick block. That said, P-Switches are so uncommon. Like, you'd imagine this is, this is pretty bad, right? The thing is that it's actually so bad that it's good. <laughs> because people have found that P-Blocks are actually really good indicators because it's so uncommon that you're gonna use P-switches that you can very cleanly use them to kind of set up a crosshair to use a substitute for a coin when a coin isn't good enough. Like when a POW block will knock down a coin or just when you need to go through the same area multiple times, etc. P-blocks are pretty clean just for setting up that little indicator. Spike traps. They are really good. Like they're ugly. All right. I'm not going to mince words. They're ugly. You kind of want to use as few of them as possible because of that, but it's really useful to just set up a zone where you don't want the player to go, where if the player goes there, they die or they take damage. It's just very, very useful to kind of set up restrictions on what the player is allowed to do. Here I should mention spike blocks, which are the 3D world equivalent, and this tier list doesn't have spike blocks, so we'll use the swamp instead. So spike blocks in general are much worse than spike traps because they are two by two instead of one by one. This makes it a lot harder to use them. Furthermore, they are on-off switch responsive. 
and usually when you want to set up an area where the player is not allowed to go there, you usually don't want that to be on-off responsive. You usually want that to be a clear area that you never want to let the player go to. And usually that's more of a hindrance than a, a benefit. That said, the ability to just clearly make an area that you're not allowed to go to, that makes it so that you just gotta suck it up and, and deal with it, even though it's just a, so much worse than a spike trap. Dotline blocks are really good. They're basically a very functional block. They allow you to kind of change different parts in your level in response to a switch that just goes off fast. Its ability to trigger things makes it generically useful in almost any sort of level you'd want to make. Music, Troll, Kaizo, Traditional, just the, the change from Mario Maker 1 to Mario Maker 2 with Dotted Line Blocks is just so, so big. They just allow you to program a lot of logic into your level. And this is without using them as terrain, but usually using them as kind of like the cornerstone for a contraption or some sort of mechanism. They're also very good for spawn blocking. You know what? I, I kind of talked myself into just putting them as an S tier because they're just that great. The Blinky block is not that great. It's, pro it's basically the worst of all the blocks in the Mario series. The main reason why it's so bad is that Blinky blocks are like the line blocks that flicker on and off on a fixed timer that you don't get to control. Because you lose that ability to trigger, you can't really use them effectively in contraptions. Their best use is for a rhythm level because they give you an audio visual cue for when they go off. So they make the, the blinking sound and it visually blinks to give the player warning for when it's going to change states. The main downside, which kind of hinders its ability to do its one job in a rhythm level is the fact that you can't change that rhythm. You can't change that cycle. So a lot of the times you are forced to build a level around that specific beat and it leads to a lot of situations where you are unnecessarily waiting for the blinky block cycle to change. Honestly, I made the D tier just for the blinky block. It's the, like the only block in the game that's just bad. You know what? I just talked myself into it. I just made up an F tier and let's put it in. The difference between a blinky block and the next relevant block is just so massive. It's just, it's bad. Next, mushroom trampolines. I, I want to kind of like separate mushroom trampoline, like the function of like the bouncy part versus the on-off trampoline in its off state, where a, a mushroom trampoline in the off state is more like a semi-solid platform that is offset in 3D world. And there's a reason why that's really, really useful in 3D world. I would say like probably even S tier. Here, let's just assume that you don't get to use an, an on-off switch. It never becomes bouncy and it's just a flat little platform. On-off trampolines are just so good in 3D world because they're like the main way that you have for making like a semi-solid platform. The difference is that many of the other semi-solid options just have a lot of restrictions in the 3D world. Just to count it off, one-way walls aren't in 3D world. Donut blocks are solid in 3D world. Cloud blocks and semi-solid platforms both have a lot of restrictions over the kind of ground that they can be overlaid. So you literally cannot put a platform that intersects a slope. You also can't put those platforms through a lot of the path items in 3D world, like track blocks, exclamation blocks, piranha creepers, snake blocks, etc. Even though mushroom trampolines cost an entity, they are like the core way you have of making a nice semi-solid platform in 3D world. And it's super useful in basically every sort of level genre, like traditional, puzzle, kaizo, troll, it's like everything. You just need that sort of platform at, like all the time. One-way walls. I want to give them S tier, but they're so ugly. They're so ugly. You'll actively try to do everything in your power to get rid of them from your level. It's so useful in a Mario Maker level to kind of like make a little area where something can only move in one direction. So like one way to the left or one way to the right. Uh, functionally, I gotta give it at least an A tier, but oh my God, like you try to basically use it as a last resort. I will rebuild a level and just like restructure a whole area because they just look so terrible. It is a struggle to use them in a level that actually looks good. I just don't understand how Nintendo could screw this up so bad. Like it is the only course part in the game that is so, so ugly in almost every single style and almost every single theme that you just, you'll go through all sorts of effort to remove them as much as possible. But I still have to give it an A tier because it's a function that you need. You just, you need it. Vines. 
They are very useful as like decorative assets. They're probably more versatile than mushroom platforms, but not as versatile as semi-solid platforms. Like functionally, vines are nice to move up and down, but let's be real here. Like you usually use them decoratively and they work well in a wide variety of styles. Vines will also make a lot of your other block spawners uh, respawnable if they break. So a, a vine block, if you break that vine block, when you reload the level through like a door or a pipe, then it will respawn, which is super useful. Vines are just so handy. I, I just, I gotta give them an A tier. They're just not so like crazy useful that they'd be an S tier. Trees are the functional equivalent of a vine in 3D World. The difference is that they are so bad. Like they are so much worse. Like first they look really good, but only if they have ground underneath them because otherwise you're just looking at an uprooted tree hanging out in the air. Second, this abomination actually costs an entity. Third, if you ever tried climbing on a tree in a fast paced level, snapping onto the tree and jumping from the tree, like especially getting on the tree is just, it's so bad. It's just, it's just so inconsistent. Fourth, and this is the biggest kiss of death for the tree. It is really hard to overlay things with it. Like it excludes so many different types of platforms from it. Like you can't put ground, you can't put arrow signs, you can't put coins. Like one of the few things that you can put with a tree, at, at least at the bottom, are keys and mushroom platforms. The bell part of the tree, or like, like the actual upper part of the tree, blocks most things as kind of like a spawner. But you know what, like let's put it even down below in F tier, like here meet the blinky block. Trees are just so bad because there's so many restrictions on how they function and how you can place them to use them well. It's just, it's just terrible. Even if you want to use a tree, you have to put the tree down low so that it can connect to the floor. But also if it's down low, then it gives the player the access to climb up the tree and go up. And in a lot of cases that introduces cheese. Overall, a tree is just so hard to use. It's just, um, just why? Icicles. Overall, I would say that they're probably more useful than ice blocks themselves. In general, you don't really set up icicles to run on top of them and slip around. You're usually using the bottom part of the icicle to deal damage, and this is overall pretty useful. On second thought, it might not be as useful as a cloud block, so I might put it like with the ice block in C tier together, even while acknowledging that it's probably still a little better than ice block. Especially in 3D World, where spike blocks are 2x2 two two instead of 1x1. One one. The ability to put these icicles down as little hazards is just really useful. That said, you don't use them all the time, so I'm putting it in more like this little niche category. The last block that's not really on this list is the frozen coin. And I don't have a frozen coin on this tier list, so I'm going to use this potabo as a, uh, as a stand-in. So frozen coins, I would say, kind of belong with ice blocks. They're kind of like ice blocks in how their physics are in terms of being slippery, but they're actually substantially more useful because they're like fire responsive blocks. Like they're more for logic or passing signals where if the frozen coin gets hit with a fireball of some sort, then it melts and can either allow Mario to pass through or allow some mechanism to go off. The thing is that triggers that work based on fire are just really uncommon and that's why I'm gonna put it down in the C tier for niche usage. Thinking through this some more, I feel like this current tier list is good enough. You basically have the ground tiles, which are an easy, like, top god tier. Then you have all the blocks that are super crazy useful all the time, the blocks that you use very frequently, the blocks that you use sometimes, and the blocks that are kind of niche. Oh right, and the things that you probably shouldn't really use. I hope you had fun with this tier list. I hope it gave you a little bit of appreciation for these different blocks and showed you a little bit of how I think about the different terrain assets in Mario Maker. If you like this content, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you around later. Bye!